Cecil Taylor is a famous jazz musician and he said the key to success in the arts is doing, doing what you do in some place small on a regular basis. And he said if you do that, the whole world will come to your door. W90.9 FM, live in studio, Petunia with Nathan M. Godfrey. <laughs> uh, yodeling and that that art of using your voice, uh, I, I instantly conjure up images of outside to me. I like, uh, I best, like outside. And you, best and you're, on the mountaintop, and you're right. That guitar is like a, a singing piece of licorice there. Yeah. A singing piece of licorice? <laughs> well, something like that. I, I like that. That song is called Cricket Song, and I, I wrote it on the porch of my friend Washboard Hank's place. And I'm far away from home and I'm To most people, it's totally unusual, and they don't, they've never heard anything like this, however... If you go back into the really scratchy old records, uh, you can find out he's doing something popular in the 20s and the 30s. I'm on my way from Frisco, going back to Dixieland. What Petunia does with uh, the Jimmy Rogers stuff is totally authentic. Weird yips and howls and things that he does, and the that's all part of uh, a country tradition. They call himself Patonia, and uh, that it, it immediately draws people in. Is your born name? Not my born name. Petunia was born, I guess, he must have been about 23, 24 when he was living in Toronto. So she, she started calling him Petunia, and then it stopped. Some people, I think, don't know his, his real name. I met a lady who I fell in love with who taught me how to play and sing, or at least she inspired me to play and sing. Soon after I met Sheila, she said, Petunia is a weird last name. And I said, that's not my last name. My last name is Fortunio, and she kept calling me Petunia. I didn't rail against it too hard. I just thought she knew what she was doing, and she, she did. She introduced me to this music, country music, like real country music. Hurry home, hurry. He was listening to music yeah, when he was... Yeah, he was listening to the heavy metal. The heavy metal, the heavy metal. Because he was a punk. He with the hair. You don't think I wanted him to listen to me? <laughs> As a first time listener to country music, I'd never heard country music before. Or at least, yeah, I don't think I had. Not the country music she had. And then I could sing and play all of a sudden with the simple sort of rudimentary uh, playing style that she had that I just I just copied what she was doing. Once upon a time under stars and under light of the moon I played on the streets for seven years all over Canada. I played every major street corner in Canada where you can go and busk. I played lots in New York City in the subways. I played a little bit up and down the East Coast, like hitchhiking around and traveling. But the mystery, the mystery of Petunia is uh, the myth of the traveler. Stomp and Tom had the myth of the traveler. Uh, Woody Guthrie had the myth of the traveler. Going back to Jean Cocteau, he said the true traveler sees uh, the same things through new eyes every day. I think he's got so much wanderlust in him. <laughs> Petunia has traveled and traveled across Canada, back and forth. He's been everywhere. And doing that 
That builds a mythology. I don't know what he's searching for. For a while, I thought it was his biological mother. That's Ronnie when he was a baby. So we got him as a baby. He was adopted, so he was eight months. He's Ron. Ron. Oh, that, that one, that's Ron behind the snowbank. That's our house in St. Dorothy. I'm from St. Dorothy, Laval, Quebec, Canada. This is Ron, the hockey player. Yeah, he couldn't play like silly. There. He was better on the bench. He wasn't going to play for the NHL. No. He was just doing it for fun. Everything he did, he did with gusto, and he had fun doing it. We had never, never hidden it from him. My parents told me when I was six, in the back of the station wagon. The next time he spoke about it, he was about 10 years old, and he, he asked about, you know, his ethnic background and all that. And, and I said, well, at 18, you're allowed to find out. You just have to, oh, he says, well, Okay, he says, remind me when I'm 18. <laughs> so I said, oh, yeah. In retrospect, I think it must have opened my eyes lots. I could be, I could be any kid anywhere on any television set that I see, you know, kids. Are. I could be any kid in the world. I could be born anywhere in the world in any station in life. And so mm. that opened my eyes that way. I think Petunia would have got a Juno a long time ago if he towed the line, like if he followed the party line, if he did what all the people said he needed to do to win one. But he doesn't give a shit about that. It's got nothing to do with that. He measures his success by the people that keep coming and the people that keep following him. He cares about the music and the authenticity of the music and the quality of the music and the tone. The Vipers are just the best band ever. That's Jack Garten on the trumpet, Patrick Metzger on the stand-up bass. Paul Townsend on the drums, Stephen on the guitar, Jimmy Roy on the lap steel. My name's Petunia, we're Petunia and the Vipers. Good night, everyone. He's pretty suspicious of the industry as a whole. You can't blame him. The industry seems to just be worse and worse in terms of the people that are running the, the business side of it. Music business has two words, music and business. <laughs> you will not be disappointed if you purchase any of those CDs over there, they're $15, that record's $25. All this other work that surrounds being a musician, it almost equals the same thing as having another job. Booking, promoting, dealing with publicists. We had some, on a, on a, c'est comme le centre culturel Aberdeen qui subventionne le projet, hein? Wow. Uh, going to the studio, dealing with the engineer, mixing records, producing records. What's your meter? Ah! Ah! Is your meter peaking? Making sure the band's all available on the same day that you want to book a date. Getting to the club at the right time. When's the sound check? When's the load in? Is there a sound man? What's the PA like in the place? So where are you going to stay that night? Where are you going to eat? Is eating fit into when you're going to get there? How much time driving do you have to get there? What shape is the vehicle in? What if your truck breaks down on the road? What are you going to do then? How much is it going to cost you in the next couple gigs? Yeah, well, that car's serving you. Oh, it broke down in Vernon. Okay. If we had our own private jet, how many gigs could we do in a day, eh? Twin Butte would be fun. I'll say hello to everyone for you. Do you guys time. know the same people in Twin Butte? Well, Lance introduced me to the place. Oh. Hey, without me? Heck, Twin Butte, who, who knows, Y River. Who knows where uh, Petunia would work? <laughs> it's true. I was introduced to Petunia about 15 years ago through my uncle Lance. I've been making records with Petunia. I, I compare it to trying to stuff a cat into a toilet bowl and you get one foot off, you know, and the other foot springs back out again and, and you get the other foot off and the other one springs back out again. He's got, he's got a vision in his head that's evolving and if you can't keep up with it, then you're shit out of luck. He's moving at 100 miles an hour and you've got to be moving at about 80 miles an hour just to understand what he's doing. And you can still argue a good, a good bit. We fought, we fought a lot, like, like bad. I always thought he'd grow up to be a lawyer because he can argue. <laughs> we should be basically cut that whole record in one day because the previous four or five days had been spent shouting at each other. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I keep doing it. I keep going back because the results are amazing. It was months and months of agonizing labor and, and, and then you get this thing back and it's just beautiful, like it's surreal. What time will tell, one cannot know. 
this mystery. I spent years touring and doing that and starving and living below the poverty line for this thing. And I understand what that is. And I understand how hard he's been going and what he's done is incredible. Like he's gone from busking on the street and hitchhiking to gigs to having the best band in the nation. Like you have no idea how hard that is. You you can't you, you can't have a family. You can't exist in society as a normal person. You give up all the comforts of home. You give up any peace in your soul because you're driven to do this thing. And I think that's insanity, indeed. It, but it's also magical. Feeling like a loner when I walk down the street. For feeling like a loner, this song came to me. Now I cry out for all our souls, for all the claim. The patient that only goes out to the brave. Do you want to scream? Do you want to cry? See the angels reaching down to me while terror lies out before us. born as wild and beautiful creatures of fancy, yet now shackled are we by the ploys of the weak and the fearful. The damaged ones among us, the rule our sick and diseased society, riddled with false guilt and broken promises, heaped upon generations of broken promises. How can this be, we ask ourselves? Maybe it's always been like that throughout all time. And that which we need most is being beaten out of our heads from the time we're little children. A belief in our own individual abilities that once born become beacons of our own true natures. What could be more important than that in a lifetime? Now consider the obstacles. They are consciously placed in this path of self-awakening. Believe in yourselves. It's the hardest thing you'll ever have to do. And I wonder sometimes if it's the same inside. Inside.